Good evening. Welcome to We the Village. This is our Black History Month special. And today I want to talk about various books that will help us to understand black history slash African American history here in the United States. One of the first books that I would like to talk about is The Souls of Black Folks, written by Dr. W. E. B. Du Bois, published in 1903. This book is a wonderful collection of essays that discuss the progress of African Americans. It discusses the conflict between W. E. B. Du Bois and Booker T. Washington. W. E. B. Du Bois happens to be an African American who was fortunate enough to go to integrated schools in Massachusetts. He was born in 1868 and he was able to obtain a doctorate degree from Harvard University. In this book, what Du Bois gets into are various aspects of African American life and the struggle that we have continued to endure. And what Du Bois says in this book is that the problem of the 20th century would be the color line. Here we are in the 21st century and we still have the problem of the color line. Du Bois and some of his colleagues actually established the NAACP in 1909, which stands for the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. And it actually started with the Niagara Movement, approximately 1903. The next book I would like to display, discuss, is The Miseducation of the Negro, which was written by Dr. Carter G. Woodson published originally in 1933. Carter G. Woodson established an organization back in 1915, which serves still to this day as a collection of African American history. And the name of the organization, we commonly know it as ASALA, the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. And this organization in 1926 began the celebration of Negro History Week which is the second week of February, commemorating the birth dates of Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. By the 1960s, this particular celebration was expanded on college campuses into the entire month of February. By 1976, President Ford had recognized February as Black History Month. The next book I would like to showcase is Indivisibles. As African Americans, many times <laughs> we have heard stories that we have Indian in our family. This particular book goes into many of the intricacies and in the lineage of African Americans in the United States who we call Black Native American. And in this book, African Native American Lives in the Americas, it discusses the intersectionality of being black and Native American. And some of the things that we deal with in this nation, such as the Seminole tribe, excluding African Americans from receiving benefits, it's a very controversial issue, but it's a very important topic that is discussed in uh, those particular circles. The next book is Medical Apartheid. This is a very important book for anyone who is interested in going into the medical field. This book goes into various parts of history, various points where African Americans have endured being guinea pigs for medical science. There are various groups and various people today who complain about the usage of animals in medical testing, in fragrance and makeup testing, but before animals were used, African Americans were used. The father of modern gynecology, J. Marion Sims, would use African American women to demonstrate, practice, experiment on them in obstetrics and gynecology. The reason why we know about gestational development is because many of the black women that J. Marion Sims experimented on were not given any anesthesia. They were spontaneously induced to give birth before full gestation of 40 weeks. And this book also talks about formula, baby formula, and some of the dangers of uh, giving formula instead of breastfeeding. 
many uh, African Americans, older ones in our community, have stories about, hey, don't go to the hospital, don't go to the doctor, because you'll come back sick. This book goes into various stories, such as the Tuskegee experiment, where African Americans were specifically injected with syphilis in order to study the progression of the disease and the effects of the disease. This book also deals with grave robbers. Many of the cadavers that are used in medical science, especially early on, were the bodies of African Americans, freshly dug graves. It's a very important book. The next book is $40 Million Slaves, The Rise, Fall, and Redemption of the Black Athlete. Many African Americans have gained wealth by playing professional sports. Many of them started in college. We currently have a controversy about whether college athletes should be paid to play sports. Although they receive full scholarships for their education, they normally net millions of dollars for their colleges and universities without any compensation. And many of these athletes, such as the African-American athletes at the University of Missouri, they protested by saying they would not play because of police brutality against African-Americans and because of the threat of boycotting playing a game, it made the university have to yield and their demands were met. I want to get into a book about some of the African-American women who have been very important in our history. Ida B. Wells, A Sword Among Lions. This powerful, strong African-American woman was so courageous in her anti-lynching campaign Many of her experiences in life were tumultuous because she spoke up when it wasn't popular. Her great-grandchildren, I've spoken to some of them, talked about how her children lived in fear because not only, not, not only was her office bombed, but her home was attacked, but she didn't care. She still was fearless about her fight and her struggle against racism and discrimination as an African-American in, in the United States. The next book, The Voice of Anna Julia Cooper. Anna Julia Cooper is a little known African American woman who has been very important in the education of African Americans. Anna Julia Cooper first talked about the whole child and what also Anna Julia Cooper did with her Freeling Heisen University, she came up with a concept of community colleges. She also, in 1925, received her doctorate degree from the Sorbonne in France, the first African-American woman to make such an achievement. The next book I would like to feature is Tom's, Coons, Mulattoes, Mammies, and Bucks. This book is quite relevant today with all of the controversy about the Oscars, the Academy Awards, Currently, Jada Pinkett Smith is calling for a boycott of the Oscars because no African Americans were nominated for Best Actor or Actress in any category. Historically, what we know about African Americans and the awarding of Oscars, the Academy Awards, especially for females, they have won for playing prostitutes, maids, servants, mammies, or slaves. And this book will talk about the history of those roles in the media, in American media. Very important piece. The next book, The Professor and the Pupil, goes into the very important and endearing relationship between W.E.B. Du Bois and Paul Robeson. Paul Robeson was known as the Renaissance man. He was everything, actor, lawyer, singer, activist, and he's someone that we need to study more often because many times we hear about the same people. Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, Harriet Tubman. There are many more. Another important African-American who was bold 
in his blackness. This book, Unforgivable Blackness, by the boxer Jack Johnson, he actually predated Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis's career and his public image was the anti-Jack Johnson. Joe Lewis's imagery was promoted as the good guy because Jack Johnson was bold and blatant in his wealth. There's a story of Jack Johnson where he was speeding in his sports car and a police officer pulled him over and gave him a ticket. The ticket was exorbitant, maybe $500. That was very expensive, even back in Jack Johnson's day. So Jack Johnson threw cash, double the ticket to the police officer because he said, yeah, well, I'm speeding there and I'm gonna be speeding on the way back. So here's the rest of my money. Very bold. As I have featured females such as Anna Julie Cooper and Ida B. Wells, I want to feature a book, What Mama Couldn't Tell Us About Love. This book goes into the things that women may have experienced because of generational lack of love, things that stretch back to slavery, and things that occurred within African-American communities, such as post-traumatic slave syndrome, that have caused African-Americans to not be able to openly show love possibly to their children. Because if you gave too much love to your child as a slave woman, then your child appeared to be more valuable and they would be sold off. So some of these generational behaviors may not be clearly known or understood, but the effects still impact us today. Monique Greenwood wrote a book for African American women, Having What Matters. This book is a helpful guide in your life for focusing on the important things that will bring you into success. Losing the Race, Self-Sabotage in Black America. This book goes into the discussion of anti-intellectualism in the African-American community. Much of this anti-intellectualism -intellectual has destroyed African-Americans and are striving for success. Much of the anti-intellectualism I could say today can be attributed to the negativity in the media, such as the music, some of the movies that may give the wrong message to young people. Instead of being uplifting, it kind of leads them into criminality, slacky, slothful behavior. And this book goes into what we need to do to refocus the attention of African Americans and American society. This book, The Black Male Handbook, is a collection of advice, various forms of advice, from various African American leaders, prominent figures. And this is very important as a guide for young black males who would like to be successful in this country. The next book is The Inventive Spirit of African Americans, Patent Ingenuity. Various African Americans have patented inventions over the years. As soon as emancipation had been granted, African Americans had been patenting products. Many of them, many black inventors, were unable to claim their intellectual property because they were not allowed to patent inventions or someone went and took their idea and patented it before they were able to. For example, Granville T. Woods invented various uh, in, in inventions, invented various inventions. He was known as the Black Edison. We have uh, Norbert Rillo, Jan E. Matzelliger, and then we have another book, The History of Black Business in America. Unfortunately, in our communities, after integration, many of the black businesses have begun to shut down because integration allowed African Americans to go to any establishment. The practice of African Americans having to patronize black businesses allow black businesses to flourish in various parts of the country. So there was a double-edged sword within integration itself. 
another great historical book, Black Jacks. We don't always get a chance to learn a lot of these topics in school because they skim past them. Black Jacks is such an excellent book because it goes into the story of black men early on, back into the 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th century of African Americans who worked on ships, who were navigators, black men who worked as whalers. Many people don't know that the, har the whale harpoon was invented by a black man. And the stories of these black men who braved rough seas is collected in this book. Our Kind of People, this book goes into various elite classes in the bourgeoisie classes of African Americans. And my grandmother, she read this book before I, got, I had a chance to read it. And she was able to relate to it because she understood some of the communities, the enclaves of African Americans in places like Virginia. And many of these African Americans, they kept within themselves and there was a culture of, of affluence within these circles that they had cotillions and debutante balls. And I believe that we need to get back to those particular practices because they can be used as rites of passage, which they were historically. Meet me at the Teresa. The Teresa Hotel is a wonderful historical, well, was a wonderful historical landmark in Harlem, New York City. Various African Americans would meet at the Teresa Hotel when they came to town to perform. People such as Dorothy Dandridge, Paul Robeson, Jimi Hendrix, Nat King Cole, Count Basie, Duke Ellington, even Fidel Castro in the 90s when he came to visit New York City and speak. He actually spoke at the Teresa Hotel. This is a historical landmark that is very deeply entrenched in the African community, and it was a very important meeting place. The Way We Wore, Black Style Then. This wonderful collection in this book discusses how African Americans many times have created style and fashion here in the United States. Many of the items and clothing and behaviors of African Americans became very much American style. The bustle in the Victorian style dress was an imitation of the African American woman's backside to fill out the back of their dress. Many African Americans have contributed to style and culture and of course popular music in America. The first piece of popular music in the United States was the Maple Leaf Rag, which was composed by Scott Joplin, an African-American man. So whether it's fashion or music, African-Americans have been very pivotal in the development of style, culture, and what is popular. The next book I would like to feature is the Encyclopedia of the Negro Leagues. The Negro Leagues were very important as a pastime for all Americans. The Negro Leagues were phased out once Larry Doby entered into the American Leagues. And then of course, we have the most famous, Jackie Robinson. When he entered Major League Baseball, it signaled the integration of baseball and the Negro Leagues died out, and unfortunately, African-Americans didn't have their own league. They didn't have a league of their own anymore. Black Wings is a collection of African-American aviators. This book deals with various African-Americans who went into aviation. It includes Bessie Coleman, who was the first woman to receive an international pilot's license. This book goes into many of the Tuskegee Airmen who flew victoriously for the United States during World War II. Many of the African Americans who were pilots were daring. 
even in the face of racism, even in the face of various people at flight schools telling them, no, we do not allow Negroes to fly planes here. They were still bold enough. This book, Black First, 4,000 Groundbreaking and Pioneering Historical Events. African Americans, as you see on the cover, we have some of the black Oscar winners. The first African American to win an Academy Award was Hattie McDaniel, and she won it for her portrayal as a slave in the movie Gone with the Wind. Unfortunately, as I stated before, many African American women have only won Academy Awards for playing very negative roles and depictions. But what's important about this book is that it highlights many of the firsts, the achievements of African Americans in the United States. For example, we can look at the first person to actually, the first American to actually reach the summit of uh, the North Pole, <laughs> Matthew Henson, an African American man. We look at some of the firsts in black history, Hiram Revels, the first black senator. We look at the first black governor in the United States, PBS Pinchback. We look at some of the first black mayors and governors. We look at L. Douglas Wilder, who was the first black governor since Reconstruction in the state of Virginia. So what we have to understand as Americans is that black history is American history. Unfortunately, it has been neglected, it has been ignored, and only certain items and elements have been highlighted. That is unfortunate, it's unfair for young black people and other young people in America because we only get the slight narrative of some of the same figures over and over again. And not to say that they're not important, but we have to look at other people, other achievements. We have to understand that as African Americans, we are able to overstep boundaries. We're able to soar and strive and utilize our talents and go further beyond what stereotypes tell us that we have to be and what we should be. We have to be bold enough, like Ida B. Wells. Ida B. Wells had a banner that hung outside of her office. It says, a man was lynched yesterday. Why? Because during her time, lynchings in the United States were so prevalent that there was always a lynching that had occurred the day before. What I want everyone to understand is that we have to dig deeper on our own. We can't wait for someone else to give us the information. We can't wait for someone else to lead us to the information. I've given you a wonderful sampling of various books. I've given you a sampling of various people. And now it is up to you to dig deeper. There are various websites to learn. There are various collections and libraries to learn these things. And I challenge all of you to dig deeper, to challenge yourself, to learn as much as you can about American history, about black history, about the things that were left out, about the people who were neglected, about yourself. And I challenge you once you learn these things to be the best that you can be, guide, inspire, motivate, encourage the children to be all that they can be. Encourage the children to go to school and do their best. Understand that their education is important. Show them that they must always be prepared and have a good work ethic. All these historical African Americans that I have mentioned had a good work ethic. They were always very purposeful. They did everything they were supposed to do in their lives. This is why they're in the history books. So inspire the young people. Parents, make sure your kids go to school with supplies. Prepare them for success at home. 
Prepare yourself for success. Let's hold ourselves to higher standards. Let's bring ourselves into the 21st century. Let's not allow the color line to be our barrier. Let's do better as a people. Let's understand that as a people, we can do better. We can do more. Sometimes uh, in discussions, African Americans don't want to focus on black on black crime. Some people do. But once the cops, with police brutality, stop killing African Americans, will we stop? Will we be as conscious about attacking each other? The Willie Lynch syndrome, we have to get away from that. Post-traumatic slave syndrome, it's another book by Dr. Joy Leary. That is something we have to work out of our minds, out of our system, out of our lineage. We have to work it out of our DNA, out of our mitochondria. And I just want to ask everyone to just strive, read. Be more. Thank you very much for tuning in to We the Village. And I hope that I've given you some motivation and inspiration. And I hope that you will go back and order these books, find these books at your library. You can order them online. And let's be better. Let's do better. Thank you. <laughs>